Hello folks and welcome to New Brighton State Beach in Aptos, California. And thank you for joining us for our third virtual campfire. My name is Paul Carr. And I'm an interpretive aide with the California State Parks. Today, join us, our senior interpretive aides, Ashley Wemp. Pravina Hasselblock. Sam Roberts and Carolina Mejia. <laughs> You're probably watching from home, sheltering in place because of COVID-19. And I want to take a moment to and appreciate and thank you for doing your part while we are all in this together. Let us know where you're tuning in from with your comments on both Facebook and YouTube. Last campfire, we had people that reported in from Oregon, Washington, Minnesota, Tennessee, Kentucky, and right here in Aptos. Thank you, and be sure to friend us. So before we begin tonight though, uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that New Brighton State Beach sits on the land of the Waswa speaking tribes of Aptos, Soquel, and Zayani who were the original stewards of this region. We want to recognize the indigenous people past and present while giving our appreciation for the opportunity to teach, work, live, and steward on their traditional homelands. So without further ado now, I'd like to present the team and let the campfire begin. Hi everyone, we're down here on the beach and if you've been down to the beach lately, you probably noticed Good. Welcome to New Brighton Beach. I'm Paul Cars and I'm a state interpreter with State Parks. And today I have a special guest for a campfire. We have Douglas the Seagull. Welcome, Douglas. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Paul, for having me on this campfire. I have to say, I'm a huge fan. I've seen the other two campfires. I don't really have Facebook, but. I've been hovering over some cars. I saw some people watching it. I decided to tune on in. Let me tell you, Paul, biggest fan of the New Brighton campfires you will ever meet, okay? Well, biggest fan. We're really glad to have you here today. Uh, tell me, uh, do you, uh, I know this is a little bit personal, but do you live by yourself or do you live with a group of friends? You know, I actually live with a whole flock of my friends. And we call it Douglas's flock because I'm the leader of the flock. I'm the alpha bird, you see? But yeah, we, we all live together. We've lived here at Seacliff in New Brighton. I've lived here for about at least five years now. So how do you guys communicate with each other? I mean, there's so many of you here. Do you, what do you do? You know, we have a, a bunch of different forms of communication. We work together a lot as a group. So that means squawking, you know, like squawk. Sometimes, sometimes we'll do deeper squawks, you know, depending on the situation. If it's a lighter mood, maybe we'll do a lighter squawk, but you know, it really just depends. And, and you know, it doesn't always have to be squawks. Well, so let me ask you another question here, uh, Douglas. Um, I, what kind of things do you like to eat? Oh man, Paul, thank you so much for asking me this question. I love food. It's my favorite thing to talk about. I really like crustaceans, fish, insects. You know, sometimes 
I'm flying around. I'll see a fish in the water. Oh, I'll just eat that fish. Um, sometimes I eat shells, but you know, with like mollusks and such, those are pretty good too. How do you get those open? Those are pretty hard. You know, it's a bit of a struggle at first when you're just a young bird, but I learned from my parents and from my flock that the best way to open up a mollusk is to drop it on a sharper rock and crack it right open. Well, that sounds really good. Uh, but if there's no mollusk or no other food around, what other things do you eat? Trash! I love trash! Mm, Paul, that's my favorite food on this planet. Well, trash, but don't, does that make you sick? Yeah, you know what? My friend Norman the Seagull actually just passed away from eating too much plastic and it made me really sad. But did that stop me? Uh, uh, I regurgitate plastic all the time, but I still love the taste. So what's your recommendation to all of our friends in the parks about trash? Well, you know, I personally love trash, but I don't know if it's a good idea for you all to continue leaving your trash on the beach because it kills a lot of my friends. You know, last year, over a million different seabirds died from trash alone. I think you all need to start picking up your trash and making sure your plastic, your glass, your aluminum, your metal, basically anything that doesn't belong on the beach shouldn't be on the beach. Well, that's a good reminder. Well, Douglas, uh, before we leave, I want to thank you very much for visiting. And how about uh, I heard that you have some musical ability. Uh, how about uh, just giving us a couple of bars of your favorite song? Sure, Paul. Here we go. Oh, Paul, I'm not going to poop on your card today. Well, thank you very <laughs> much. I appreciate it. You have a good one. Hi, everyone. We would just like to acknowledge and thank Friends of Santa Cruz State Parks for helping support and fund a lot of our state parks in the area here. You can find on their website some cool state park cats, as well as Douglas and some of, some of his fluffy friends, and shark hand puppets, children books, games, pencils, pens, erasers. You want it? Friends got it! B-I-N-G-O, 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 and Bingo was his name. Hey folks, welcome to Plastic Free July. Today we're going to be playing a conservation thing bingo card that our interpreter Pravina created for us to play today. It will help us learn how to reduce our waste. The bingo card is going to be available down in our comment section, so make sure to share it on your social media and play along with us if you would like. You know, it's always nicer to leave a place better than the way you found it. Pick up your trash. Hey guys, so this is my reusable tote bag that I carry around with me wherever I go. I use it for my groceries and for my lunch. And inside this tote bag, I also have a lot of my reusable utensils that I can have such as my spoon, my fork, my knife, but also this stainless steel straw, which I use sometimes instead of a plastic straw when I want to drink my iced coffee. So when you're at the grocery store and you're buying that pasta sauce or your jam to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, uh, you can buy them in glass jars. And when you're done eating your sauce or your jam, you can reuse the jars for uh, like this big one you can use to put flowers in it, use it as a vase, or use it for smoothies or water. And then for the small one, you can also put flowers in here or you can even use it as a pencil holder.
Hey everybody, if you know one thing about me, it's that I love my coffee. That's right, every day I drink coffee. That's why I'm so energetic on these videos. And usually, I drink coffee right out of these mugs. However, I recently found out these mugs aren't recyclable. You know what? Drinking these single-use coffee cups and throwing them out each day really adds up. Just think about how many people go get coffee from their local coffee shops and use these single-use cups. Well, that's why I started using a reusable mug, just like this. So now, I don't have to throw out these cups anymore. Basket, nothing but Not. garbage bag. <laughs> <laughs> everyone can do is spreading awareness and sharing information so information on what's happening to our climate what's happening with plastic pollution especially in our oceans um, and spreading that information so that more people are aware um, you can also spread awareness of what types of alternatives and changes you are making in your own life so I for one have started using a reusable face mask because we've noticed a huge increase in disposal face masks gloves um, and baby wipes and hand wipes around our parks. So this one change is gonna make a big difference and I'm now using way less disposal masks than I was before. Hi everybody, welcome to New Brighton State Beach. My name is Ashley and I'm an interpretive uh, specialist here. And I am joined with a very special guest, Matt. Go ahead and say hi to everyone, Matt. Hello, folks. My name is Matt Prentiss. I am a senior park aide here in the central county of the Santa Cruz district. And I'm just going to ask you a few questions, um, starting with why did you join a state park? Wow, what a elaborate question. Um, well, I'm a real man of conservation and preservation of our natural history and the environment itself. And I found that this position is a good way to segue into a career of preservation and conservation of our natural resources. Very cool. I'm also big into conservation. And what, uh, you work in Nicene, right? Uh, yes, I find myself up there every now and then. Uh, do you have any, uh, or like what sort of things do you find in Nicene? Well, every now and then I will stumble upon a banana slug, oh. which is one, a very common creature there down by the creek in a nice moist area. Other things I'll find there are black-tailed deer, and uh, every now and then I will hear the howl of a coyote. Wow. Have you ever actually seen one of the coyotes? Once, when I first started with parks, I saw one run across the road real quick. As soon as I saw it, it was gone. Wow. Um, what sort of trees are found in Nike? Well, typically the most common is going to be a, uh, a redwood tree, which is a, a twin, I guess, to the cypress. Pardon, not the cypress, the, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Nonetheless, uh, redwood trees are going to be the most common. As you gain elevation, you're going to see more uh, oak trees and, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank again, but there's a few there. Okay, very cool. Yeah, redwoods are one of my favorite trees. And I know me personally and a lot of our viewers um, like to go hiking in Nike Mark. Do you have any updates for what's going on in the park there? Well, updates for hikers. The footbridges are in, so that allows hikers and uh, trail goers to cross the creek safely and effectively without getting wet or tripping and stumbling upon things that they shouldn't have to. Uh, another update for more mountain bikers per se would be that the slide out that occurred some odd time ago that's about five miles past Sandpoint is now clear. Uh, bikers and pedestrians are now able to go across the road. Thank you for that update. And with that, I want to thank you for joining us today, Matt. Thank and you. And I hope to see you in Nike. Mm -hmm. I'll see you around. Sounds good. I'm gonna sing you my seagull song that is kind of just um, free, free, just, I don't know how you say it, but it, it's, I, I didn't come up with the lyrics, I'm just gonna um, kind of sing it right now. Let me know what y'all think. Okay. Oh, one, 
two, a one, two, three, four, seagull, seagull, flying through the air, seagull, seagull, right over there, oh seagull, seagull, flying through the air, bet you didn't know I could hit those notes, seagull, seagull, right over there. All right, everyone, that was my song. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think below. I don't know, this, I've been thinking about like auditioning for America's Next Top Moth or American Idol or something, if that's still on, you know, one of those shows. Let me know what you think, if I could do it. I'll see you all next week with another song. Seagull, seagull.